Thank you, Taha. Uh, let me actually uh, quickly spend a few minutes introducing our keynote speaker for today, Umar Ghani. Uh, as uh, he is the CEO and co-founder of Kilowatt Labs, which we will hear a lot about during his session as to how he actually got to where he is and how he uh, founded it and uh, the lessons learned while doing uh, this exercise. Uh, he is really passionate about energy access and climate improvement. Uh, and this is Kilowatt Labs is not his first uh, rodeo. Uh, he has done uh, two other successful ventures in his previous life. Uh, he was a founding member of CNBC Arabia, uh, which was the first 24 hour Arabic language business news channel in Arab world. Uh, he also co founded uh, Manan Shahid Forgings, which was an automotive part manufacturing firm in Pakistan. Uh, and they were very successful there as well. Omar, on a, on a personal level, has two kids, uh, live in New York, and is also a graduate of Columbia University with a degree in industrial engineering. Uh, welcome, Omar. I would uh, make you a presenter now, and then we would uh, like to listen to your story. Thank you. Thank you, um, uh, Zaheer, and it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. I'm actually very excited uh, to talk to everyone. Uh, I'm just going to go to the front of my presentation. Okay, um, so yeah, it's uh, it's a pleasure to be here with everyone, and uh, I hope uh, that I'm able to communicate what I have been experiencing over the, my uh, business life, which started when uh, I graduated uh, from Columbia, and uh, I went back to Pakistan. Uh, I had a brief stint. Um, in the 80s, like everyone, almost everyone at that time, with uh, a bank called BCCI. I worked as a bond trader in London for them for about two years, but after that I, I left. Um, and uh, in 1987, I went back to Pakistan uh, because uh, somehow right out of college, I, I had, um, you know, the desire to have an own business, own my own business. At that time, um, the word entrepreneurship and and uh, you know, the world around entrepreneurship was was developing. It wasn't very uh, big, so you had to, uh, you know, just step out. And it wasn't the dumb thing, but for some reason, that's what I wanted to do. Uh, so then uh, in 1987, I went back to Lahore, where I'm from, um, and um, I got involved uh, with uh, establishing Manan Shahid Forgings, which is an automotive parts company uh, that's based in Lahore. Um, we were supplying uh, uh, in those days uh, millet tractors and Al Ghazi tractors. Uh, that was our main uh, focus. Uh, and uh, then there was an Awami tractor scheme that happened when Mr. Zardari took over, which actually shut down millet and Al Ghazi for, for a considerable period of time, uh, which forced us then to go abroad uh, and find new markets, which was a very interesting experience. And, uh, we ended up uh, scoring some very interesting wins, which actually opened our eyes to the world and to to understand that wow, you know, uh, there's a lot of automotive parts that are being uh, uh, bought and sold in the world. Um, and then, um, so so I did that till 1997. Uh, Manan became and still is probably the largest exporter of automotive components, uh, supplying to companies like Dana Corporation and. Uh, you know, these are OEMs uh, for General Motors and Ford, uh, and they have a very large uh, uh, export business. Uh, in fact, um, uh, uh, several years after I left, Abraj bought Manan Shahid, so it's an Abraj portfolio company now. Abraj Capital is a private equity fund in the Middle East, if you don't know about them. Uh, in 1997, then, uh, I, I sold my shares uh, to the other partners and I left uh, and I went to Dubai where uh, with another gentleman uh, I uh, got in, involved in the television business and I was able to uh, 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 convince NBC at that time to give us the CNBC Arabia franchise uh, to run and operate a business news channel which there was no business news channel at that time in 2001. Um, it was a very interesting time. 9/11 uh, had just happened. In fact, 9/11 happened, and and we it it, it sort of was a, was a blessing for us because we were competing with very large corporations for the franchise from NBC, uh, like Al Jazeera, and uh, these were big broadcasters, and we were a very small company of five people making one program a week. 
And when when 9/11 happened, NBC actually pulled out of those uh, negotiations because of the political affiliations that existed between uh, those stations and the governments of of the Middle East. And uh, it gave us the opportunity because we didn't have any political affiliations, and uh, so we were able to get that franchise, which was uh, which was very uh, shockingly shocking for us. But we got it, and uh, um, then we built that TV station over there. Uh, so till about 2009, 2010, to 2008, 2009, I I uh, I was involved with that business, um, and then at that time uh, in 2008, 2009, I invested my shares and uh, I I moved on, um, and then uh, I was in Dubai, and I was uh, actually um, like everyone else invested in real estate, uh, but I was also looking for something to do, uh, which resonated with me you know, on a personal level uh, rather than just set up a company and make money. And I met uh, my current partner and, and CTO Wasim Ashraf Qureshi uh, at a trade fair, at a renewable energy trade fair. And he was displaying his wares and his uh, products, which he had invented. And uh, he was the only guy in, in that trade fair who said that he is able to produce electricity cheaper than Diwa. Whereas everybody else was saying, no, they, they go to, you know, they're just based in Dubai, but they're exporting to Africa, et cetera. So I, I, I um, uh, became his friend and I understood what he was doing. And he was, uh, he's actually a, an inventor uh, and, and he, uh, he's the youngest recipient of the Pakistan Science Award. He won it at the age of 14 in Zayal Huck's time. And he's uh, the guy who invented the first Pakistani UPS back in the day and, and uh, the Pakistan army then started buying it. So, so he was, he's, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a genius in, in my view and he, he's a very great inventor. So he put forward a proposal to me that look, uh, these inventions, uh, I like to invent, I, I do business, I sell them because I have to, and I have to survive, but you know, I have 50 inventions and, and we need to set up a platform, uh, because these inventions to roll them out, um, uh, into the world, uh, you require a lot of capital and you require a, a structure and, a, you know, a, an organization. And, you know, it seems like with your experience, uh, you can put that together. And uh, I was very honored that he, you know, chose me because he could have chosen anybody with the inventions that he had. And uh, that was the seed with uh, which we formed this company uh, in 2013. I uh, uh, I reached out to my roommate from Colombia, uh, who you know was I was in Dubai. He was living in he, he's a he's a native of New York, and he had just uh, finished his career in Wall Street as a fund manager. And uh, so I reached out to him and I said, look, this is a you know very interesting opportunity. And he then uh, got very interested in it, and we we joined forces. And so myself. Uh, his name is Chip, Chip Cyber, uh, Chip and Wasim Qureshi. We founded Kilowatt Labs and uh, started our uh, our journey for, for, for about Kilowatt Labs uh, in 2013 from Dubai. And in 2015, uh, we took a decision to actually move the company here because um, raising capital, you know, which is a very important part of our uh, important need of ours, um, is is uh, not very well structured, not as well structured as it is in the U.S. for new technology companies. Uh, it's very good if you have a you know a franchise of uh, of a running business, you can get a lot of money in the Middle East. But we realized that to, to invest in greenfield technologies, uh, you have to be in the U.S. So in 2015, I came to New York City. I moved to New York City, and we incorporated Kilowatt Labs as a U.S. Uh, based company. Um, so uh, uh, our mission is to develop uh, solutions to the world's energy problems um, and we're completely focused on the world of energy. There are many aspects to it, uh, but currently uh, we are commercializing two of our uh, products, two of, of Wasim's inventions. Uh, the first one is the Sirius. Sirius is a super cap based energy storage system, uh, which is the first super cap based energy storage system. Uh, it's a non-chemical uh, storage system. 
and it's based on supercapacitors, which are storage devices um, that, that are not chemical, they are graphene based. And supercapacitors actually is a very old, a capacitor is a very old product which was actually formed or invented around before the chemical battery was invented and has been used for storage for all these years, uh, but it's been used for power applications. You can charge it quickly, but you, you can only discharge it very quickly. So Wasim was able to, uh, uh, to solve the problems that supercaps had electronically uh, in being used as a battery. So a battery has certain attributes which the supercaps were not able to as just purely supercaps do. But when he put the electronics around it, we, we can uh, uh, deliver the same attributes that a battery can. But with the, uh, the high, uh, the many advantages supercaps have, which is like they have a one million cycle uh, life. So it's a very, very long uh, product uh, and it does get, doesn't get affected by uh, temperature and, and the rate at which you can charge it and the rate at which you can discharge it. So it's a very impactful product. It, it can be used in any application uh, where there's a battery from a cell phone all the way to a car to the grid. Um, so, so that's one product uh, that we're commercializing. And the other product that we're commercializing is called Centauri. It's an energy server, uh, much like the IT server. It, it actually is the first product uh, in the world that actually aggregates any input which can be uh, renewable or non-renewable uh, and connects to storage systems and gives you an output that you can operate any application, whether it's a home or a, a factory or a city uh, or a village uh, in one device. It has all the functionalities. Um, so those are the two products that we are uh, commercializing. Uh, our head office is here and our commercial operations are here in New York City. Um, uh, Dubai is our uh, manufacturing and R&D hub where Wasim is based and still lives. Um, and we have a small operation in China where we do a portion of our manufacturing, initial manufacturing there, and then we bring it all to Dubai. And that's where we uh, uh, finish the products and ship them out from. So we have a 100,000 square foot facility in Dubai. Um, we are already commercial, we're operational. Uh, we have distribution arrangements in uh, several countries outside the US, South Africa, Australia, Pakistan, Indonesia, Italy, Spain, New Zealand, uh, Canada, uh, and we are opening new um, markets uh, pretty much every month on, on the basis of the strength of this product. It's actually quite popular these days. Um, so, um, and yes, we're self-funded. We don't have any venture capital or private equity money. Um, and uh, this self-funded is uh, our own resources and uh, uh, friends and family. We were actually uh, uh, in the middle of last year joined by a fourth gentleman whose name is Paul Burke. He is uh, also a, a, um, a friend of ours from Colombia. So he and I were uh, uh, on the same floor on our freshman year. So he, I've known him since 1980. Chip and I were roommates. We were both on this Columbia squash team. So we go back a long way. So we have a very deep, long relationship with each other. And then we are, uh, you know, our, our mission is to uh, support Wasim in his inventions. Um, so I've told you what we're doing now. We're actually selling the energy storage and the energy server for solar cell tower, street lights, microgrids, UPS containerized applications. The Centauri is being installed in some very cool projects in Africa and Indonesia. What we are uh, concluding right now is our rapid charge uh, product, which is going to be targeted to electric vehicles. And uh, the, um, the main feature of that is that it will be able, you, you can charge the car in less than a minute. So we're hoping to launch that in, in the fourth quarter. So that's a little bit about Kilowatt Labs. Um, and let me get into the, the, the core of what my talk is. Um, you know, I, I, I've uh, been very fortunate to um, actually be able to do what I really wanted to do. I have absolutely no idea why I wanted to be a businessman. My father was a pilot. Um, very few people from uh, my immediate family have gone into business except for one uncle who is my partner in Mananshad Foragings. So I have no, uh, I don't know where the, the bug came from, but even while I was in university, I, I, when I was graduating, I didn't even look for a job. Uh, I just went back to Pakistan and I said, look, I want to do, I want to, I want to 
open my own business. But I couldn't in the beginning because I just wasn't ready. So I joined BCCI for a couple of years.